As darkness blanketed the sky and waves crashed upon the shore, looming in the distance stood Fort Wagner. Cannons fired ceaselessly and gunshots echoed. There was only one way out. Forward. It was in this moment that Colonel Robert Goldshaw of the Civil War stepped from the pages of a muster roll to the pages of history. The son of prominent Boston abolitionists, Robert Goldshaw was born October 10, 1837, to Francis and Sarah Shaw. Robert Goldshaw himself, his family, is considered some of the strongest abolitionists at the time. Uh, he himself is not a devout abolitionist, but yet when you look at him, he was willing to serve and lead as a white man in charge of an African-American regiment. He enjoyed a comfortable upbringing with his four sisters. In 1847, his family moved to Stanton Island, New York, where he commonly associated with performers and writers such as Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, William Lloyd Garrison, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. As a young man, he studied abroad in Switzerland and traveled through Europe. Returning home in 1855, he enrolled at Harvard. However, in 1859, Shaw withdrew before completing his degree and decided to enter his uncle's mercantile firm in New York instead. Though he was fond of the city, he found that he was ill-suited for business. When war came in 1861, Shaw found a purpose. He immediately enlisted in the exclusive militia regiment, the 7th New York National Guard, where he served to defend Washington, D.C. for 30 days. After the 7th disbanded and many of its members returned to civilian life, Shaw remained a soldier. He had at last found a vocation that commanded his enthusiasm and respect. In May of 1861, he accepted commission as second lieutenant of the newly organizing 2nd Massachusetts Infantry. During nearly two years of service in the 2nd Massachusetts, in which he rose to the rank of captain, Shaw was wounded at the Battle of Antietam and saw some of his closest comrades fall in battle. Shaw became deeply devoted to his men and it was from this devotion that he fa was faced with a very difficult decision. After the Emancipation Proclamation given on January 1, 1863, President Lincoln authorized the raising of black troops. While the idea of arming black men was controversial and unpopular among many white soldiers and citizens, countless others found great favor with this authorization. Many people assume that all of the people in the North are anti-slavery and totally want African Americans and whites to get along. That isn't true. There's a lot of racism in the North as well. Northerners don't like um, slavery often because uh, it doesn't work in their system. But Robert Goldshaw goes beyond that when he's willing to serve. Massachusetts Governor John Andrew, a strong abolitionist, raised one of the first regiments of black troops in the Union Army, the 54th Massachusetts Infantry. In February, Shaw's father, Francis, personally delivered a letter from the governor offering Shaw command of the 54th. However, much to the dismay of his parents, Shaw declined this offer due to his strong devotion to the 2nd Massachusetts. In one of his letters, he expressed his devotion through writing. It is very hard to decide to leave a regiment with which one has gone through so much danger and hardship as I have in this. But Shaw knew he had disappointed his parents, particularly his mother. Unable to break his mother's heart, he accepted the command as colonel two days later at the age of 25. His initial offering to serve doesn't come right away. He has to think about it for a while. His wife is involved as well. Uh, but then when he realizes the impact that the 54th will have, he agrees to serve with the regiment. And probably what his legacy is, and, and the honor that's attributed with him, is the bond that he will make with those African American soldiers. Those men will literally love him, uh, and they're willing to die for him, and as his ultimate sacrifice, he's willing to die for them as well. By the middle of February 1863, recruiting for the 54th Massachusetts Regiment was underway. Newspaper advertisements and recruiting posters encouraged black men to enlist. On February 21st, Camp Mize in Reedville, Massachusetts was opened for training of the 54th. Many people feared this all-black regiment would fail, but Shaw was determined to see its success. Knowing about Gold Shaw, one of the most unique attributes is him leading the 54th Massachusetts African-American Regiment, 
Most states will put their troops into what are called United States Colored Troops regiments. Massachusetts is going to go beyond that and actually allow their soldiers to serve in a state-designated regiment. And that goes to show a state like Massachusetts is very pro-abolitionist. Ashaw continued to be an instrumental leader in the progress of the 54th. He married Annie Haggerty in early May of 1863. Shaw's mother feared this marriage would interfere and distract him from his duties, but he reassured her in one of his letters that he would never neglect his duty. Shaw did not lie to his mother, for on May 28th, the 54th boarded ships, leaving behind the barracks of Massachusetts for the tents of Hilton Head, South Carolina. Upon departing the city, streets were filled with joyous supporters as they witnessed the remarkable sight of 1,000 black soldiers in arms proudly marching behind the Stars and Stripes. The success of Shaw in the 54th was yet to be determined. As war escalated in the South, Union troops looked to capture the defiant city of Charleston by first eliminating the formidable Fort Wagner on Morris Island. Shaw agreed to lead the charge on Fort Wagner, knowing that it was the key to capturing Charleston, and if his black men could storm the fort, they would open the door to the birthplace of the rebellion, the ultimate symbol of triumph over suppression. On the night of July 18, 1863, the 54th Massachusetts prepared to storm Fort Wagner. Most officers don't lead in the front. They're usually a little bit in the back. There were only a couple of regiments. I want you to prove yourselves, Wagner. he said. It's a death trap. The eyes of thousands will look on what you do tonight. A, literally a fortified castle. And it was known that whatever regiment was going to charge, the casualties would be high to perhaps even no one surviving at all. Yet uh, Colonel Robert Gold Shaw will agree to lead that charge in the front with his men, and no doubt it is that perseverance, his men seeing him and him being willed to serve, willing to serve with them, which is a very big deal. Uh, Gold Shaw will take him right up to the lip of the fortress, and for a brief moment, actually, he and his men uh, will actually penetrate part of the fortress for a little while. Um, suffering shots to the chest, which will kill him during the battle, uh, does not end his legacy. Uh, one could probably say, his willingness to lead that black regiment during the Civil War is a setup for white and black relations to come down the road. Uh, more white officers will agree to serve later on. Uh, at the same token, it actually spurs on, in my opinion, the Civil Rights Movement, uh, the concept of African Americans and whites serving together. Although there still be segregation for a long while, black officers aren't allowed to lead black troops. Gold Shaw sets up the example that African Americans and whites can serve together. As a sign of disrespect, his body was thrown into a mass grave. However, many hailed Shaw for his heroic actions. Shaw's father wrote, We can imagine no holier place for that in which he lies, among his brave and devoted followers. From a military basis, the assault on Fort Wagner was a failure, but the effect was monumental. Shaw had united his men and instilled upon them the determination to fight until the last chain upon their brothers was broken. Shaw's involvement with the 54th Massachusetts laid a precedent for desegregation of black troops. In 1948, President Truman officially ended desegregation in the armed forces, which was the capstone of what Shaw had started. The 54th also remains the most renowned regiment of the Civil War today. Since Shaw's death, over 40 poems have been written to eulogize him. Also, the movie Glory encompasses the trials of his life and is considered as the best Civil War movie to date. Numerous mon monuments have been erected in his honor. Robert Gold Shaw has proved himself as a leader by surpassing the standard attributes we assign great leaders with, namely strategies and tactics. Shaw stood for something more. Although bravery describes him in a just way, it was more than the bravery to lead men into battle. It was bravery to lead a nation on a new path, one that would signify in many ways the initial steps of defeating segregation. Shaw's victory was not just his admirable traits in battle against the South, but the role he served in showing the North was willing to embrace its African-American citizens. Although years of struggle after the Civil War and still today show the wear and tear on the nation's fabric over racism and ethnic bias, Shaw played a leading role although he did not know it at the time, in setting the nation on the right path.